Thank you. Thank you, the organizer, for the invitation. And uh, so, of course, there is some overlap with the uh, previous talk. So I will probably f just flesh out some slide that I put there just in case, unlikely case, that some people, you know, show up. Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. OK, so, uh, so I will skip those. Uh, OK, so maybe just, just notation. So for a rectangle uh, with side M and N, uh, so omega and M will, sorry, yeah, this will be the set of all possible triangulation. Uh, there is an, in, an important case, maybe just to keep in mind, is what happens when, uh, when uh, one, one side of the original rectangle is one. So this is an extremely f uh, thin uh, rectangle. Uh, so in this case, uh, there is a one-to-one -one corresponding between uh, lattice triangulation and uh, lattice path. And this will sort of be a useful guideline to understand certain mixing uh, time result later on. So in particular, the, 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 the corresponding, for example, uh, if, uh, if, a triangular, uh, if a triangle has a horizontal side up, then uh, you, you put a you know, in the, in, the, in the lattice path, you, you put a 45-unit uh, uh, segment up. And so, for example, here we have one, two, one, two up, then one down, up, up again, uh, et cetera. OK, so, so this is a, is, a, is a corresponding between these two objects. And so when we will run some, uh, some global dynamics on the triangulation, in this very specific case, this will transfer in the uh, usual mountain valley uh, dynamics for lattice path. Yes? Sorry? No, that's what we will discuss today, what, what happens today. So in a strip is more complicated and thin triangles actually in, uh, will be just triangle in which M, so, the, so I will always take the horizontal uh, side very long, so N arbitrary long and the vertical side M, which is uh, finite, OK? Uh, maybe, actually, we could even take, you know, very, very slowly growing, but uh, let's, let's say constant. OK, so um, Alex already uh, outlined this difference, but uh, I want to do it again, because um, this will explain certain complication uh, that we have when studying the mixing time of the global dynamics with respect to spin model. So um, each, uh, each uh, edge uh, of the lattice triangulation uh, has a midpoint, and this point is, uh, is, is fixed, is deterministic. Okay? So if you are, when, when you assign an edge to a midpoint, it's like assigning a spin. Okay, first of all, the spin can have many, many values. Okay? And not just like say using a spin with two values, and uh, so for spin system, the, the most important point is that for spin system, on a graph, the interaction is local. Once you once you fix the the neighbor of a of a point, then uh, the law of the spin in that point is given, is assigned. However, an edge, I mean, as what do you mean by the law of the spin? In, in in a spin system on a, on, a, on a graph, if so if the interaction is local, so, so the law of the, of the spin at the vertex, once you specify the value of the spin around, then the, the law at that vertex is specified. Typically, it's a very simple law. OK? Um, so it is true that an edge has always uh, f uh, four neighboring edges, just the, on the two triangles uh, on which the edge uh, belongs. Uh, however, the corresponding midpoints of these four neighboring edges, they can be arbitrarily far from the midpoint of the edge you are, you are looking at. And therefore, there is, a, there is a strong lack of locality or geometry, if you want. Okay? And this causes uh, um, most of the, of the difficulties in the, in the analysis of the global dynamics. OK, so. Uh, OK, again, uh, so uh, an edge is flippable if it belongs to, to a, is, if it is the diagonal of a parallelogram. This is an example. And as Alex said, I mean, the flip graph is always connected. OK? 
So, okay, so if you want to, to, to sample from the uniform distribution, you can run the dynamics in which you, you choose an edge, and if the edge is flippable, you flip it with equal probability. And instead, if, we, uh, if you want to sample from the uh, Gibbs distribution that it described, uh, then you have to do with, uh, you, you, have, you have to flip the edge with, with different rate in such a way that it's reversible, okay. So we saw the beautiful simulation. So the simulation suggests that there is a phase transition for lambda one, and and the precise conjecture for the behavior of the mixing time is the following. So the, there should be fast mixing uh, for for any lambda less than one. There should be uh, an exponential uh, torpid mixing um, for any lambda bigger than one and we conjecture, but we really don't know if, it, if for lambda equal one is polynomial, is some polynomial. In that case, it would be interesting first to determine that it's a polynomial, and then maybe uh, looking for the for the power, for the exact exponent. So let's see what what uh, what what is known now. Uh, so here I will describe some result that. Uh, um, are valid for any choice of this length side of the of the rectangles. Okay, so the the first result is rapid mixing for sm small lambda. So uh, if lambda is sufficiently small, smaller than one, uh, then with any possible of constrained edges that are, for example, boundary boundary edges that are sticking in your your rectangle or that are frozen. Uh, then uh, the, mi the mixing time is what it should be, is what is conjectured to be. And instead, uh, uh, if, if lambda is bigger than one, then we have uh, an exponential result, but still far, f is, so it's still not, not optimal, in the sense that, so we, we can prove uh, that the mixing time for any lambda bigger than one, I'll, sh I'll show you how, uh, is exponentially large in the, say, the longest uh, side of the rectangle, uh, while in fact, I mean, we were expecting, say, for a square, like exponentially nine cubes. So we are really, we are really still far from the from the optimal result. Okay, so maybe just uh, just few words how how we prove this um, uh, this 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 two result. So. Uh, so for rapid mixing for small lambda, we use path coupling plus the exponential metric, and this was inspired by uh, uh, a paper by Greenberg, Pasco, and uh, Dena uh, in 09. That so this exponential is is now is a sort of well-known technique, in a sense, as established technique. So the exponential metric is the, that that we want to contract under the path coupling is so. Uh, if you take uh, two, two configuration that differs only at one uh, for for the edge at the mid. One comment. So exponential metrics were used in the paper that you know by Mosel and Claire Kenyon and myself uh, for using one. Okay. Correct. Yeah. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we have two triang uh, two triangulation that differ only for an edge at uh, midpoint x, then. Uh, then the distance, and we fix the distance like that. Okay, so if they differ just in a trivial way, namely uh, the two edges at the midpoint are just uh, one unit uh, diagonal and the opposite unit uh, diagonal of, uh, of a unit square, then it's this value. Otherwise, um, otherwise it's this, uh, it's this quantity here, and alpha is, is some number bigger than one. And then the main result is that if lambda is small enough, one hit, that's come from uh, all the Pyers argument uh, that, uh, and uh, result that uh, Alex described in the previous talk, then actually uh, we, we can prove that this uh, on one, so contracts in uh, the path coupling sense. So after one step of the dynamics, there is a contraction. Okay, and from there, uh, using the fact that the matrix exponential, you recover immediately the result that I 
that I mentioned before for rapid mixing. So torpid mixing instead for lambda bigger than one, well the approach is the standard one, so you look for a bottleneck in the phase space, in the space of configuration, and so, uh, so, so an exponential bottleneck is a set in the, uh, of, com of triangulation such that the ratio of the probabilities between the boundary of the set and the set itself is say exponentially small, okay? And so the boundary here are the triangulation in the set such that with just one flip of the, of the triangulation you get out of the set. Okay, so, so this is a standard uh, tool that uh, once you have an exponential bottleneck then the mixing time is uh, essentially the inverse of this, of this ratio. Uh, okay, so here is, a, uh, so here is a, an exponential bottleneck. Notice that it's very different from what we saw in the, in the simulation. So in the simulation we saw that the typical configuration uh, for lambda bigger than one they have mostly one orientation, okay? And so a very natural uh, bottleneck would be something like uh, all triangle, so the triangulation that they have say 99% of the edges they have this, this orientation and then the boundary would be triangulation that in a sense you know with one flip you get out of this set and so they should have sort of too many edges that have uh, you know an orientation that is wrong okay this we try um, for a while but we, we, we didn't succeed what we succeed in finding is this what we call the herringbone uh, bottleneck so in each one dimensional layer for the for the rectangle you put uh, edges with a, with say positive or negative orientation like in this uh, uh, like in this pattern like the you know the codes for the you know men's code okay and and uh, so uh, here I mean um, so this is really an exponential bottleneck because if you if you take a triangulation that is that has this shape but as is at the boundary namely with just one flip you can uh, you can get out of the set then this this mean that this this triangulation as a vertical unit vertical edge in one of the layers okay and just by turning this this edge you get out of this herringbone uh, pattern uh, and then you can so using this observation you can compute the the cost the the, the probabilistic cost for for having a an edge that is vertical somewhere. So if the edge actually is, ver is vertical and is r sort of in the middle of, of a layer, then the cost would be exponential in n square, negative exponential in n square. But actually, the, 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 this vertical guy could be also uh, like at the beginning. Then the cost is only n, okay? And uh, and this gives gives the gives the result that uh, that was mentioned here. Okay, so actually it is, a, it is an open problem either, even to understand what is exactly the shape of the ground state, namely ground state, you know, the, 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 the triangulation with the longest possible uh, uh, length. Okay, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting problem that is open. So even if you could work out the other test function for 99% of the facing, Yeah. Uh, we have an improvement for uh, for thin rectangles later on, so I'll I'll, I'll show that. Okay, so uh, thin thin rectangles, namely rectangles in which the vertical side is constant uh, compared to the to the very long horizontal side, they sort of should be should they should behave similarly to the one-dimensional case. Okay, so the one-dimensional case. Uh, correspond to this lattice path, and the dynamics there uh, is is well understood. Uh, and this is and this is the situation. So if m is one, so if lambda is less than one, then uh, the mixing time behaves really like n square. If lambda is bigger than one, then is exponential in n square. And if lambda is exactly one, this was uh, you you can solve it by by various methods. But say you can use the coupling method by, by Wilson, which is very precise apart the constant factor, and then the, the mixing time is n cube log n. Okay, so, uh, 
Okay, so what, what are the results for thin rectangles? So when m now is not one but constant, okay? So unfortunately there is no longer a representation uh, like with, with using lattice path, okay? So the situation is really gets much more involved. Uh, and the result is the following is that, oh, sorry, so for lambda less than one, mixing time is like n square, exactly as it should be. For lambda bigger than one is again exponential in n square, but the exponential rate uh, deteriorates when m increases, okay? And however, we, we don't know anything about the case, even, even for thin rectangles, we don't know about the case lambda one. Okay, so, okay, so at the uh, sort of high level uh, description of how to prove this, these two results. So, the, um, so here we use uh, again the bottleneck approach, okay, however here now we can, uh, we, we can improve uh, and get the exponential of n square okay, accepting a deteriorating rate of one over m, okay? And, uh, and so, this is, so this is improving the herringbone uh, uh, picture, namely instead of asking of having a complete herringbone in each one dimensional layer, we only ask the herringbone structure in say 90% uh, of the layer away from, from the boundaries, okay? And uh, so that actually allows us to, to, to get that the energy cost is n square and allows us to do a, 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 a tight comparison of the partition function, so the sum of the, um, of the weight for each configuration uh, when we take the, the ratio of the probabilities. Uh, but uh, this is only, sorry, this is only possible when, uh, when m uh, is, is order one, oh, sorry, so it's finite, okay? So otherwise we, we, we get this, this bad factor here. So instead, I mean, what, what about the, the n square mixing time? So the lower bound is simple because it's just a dim, it's like the diameter of the, uh, of the space. And so what is interesting is the, is the upper bound. So the, 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 the route to, to, to prove it is, is rather elaborate. So first, we prove that in time n square, starting from any arbitrary triangulation, we enter a good set of triangulation, where good set of triangulation means, say, order log n uh, length for each edges. And for, and for this result, we use in a, uh, it, it, it is a key consequence of the Lyapunov function that Alex described, okay? Because outside, I mean, I mean, when 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 you have uh, edges that are longer than log n, then the Lyapunov function or height function that that it described has a contraction property, so decreases, and this able so enables to prove that there is like a drift condition. And uh, you, you enter in n square step, you enter this, this, this good set. And actually you can prove that once you enter there, you, you stay for uh, say a large polynomial in n time, like n to the 10, okay? We are shooting for n square, so that's more than enough. Therefore, I mean, we can only concentrate on a restricted chain inside this, this good set, okay? And uh, okay, so there we, there now this, this analogy with spin system, which in principle is extremely dangerous because uh, midpoints of two neighboring edges, they can be geometrically very far apart. Given the fact that the edges are not too, too long, maybe now this can be sort of restored or at least partially restored. And this is exactly what is going to happen. So we, we will use, um, log Sobolev, so we have to, uh, to, to prove log Sobolev bound plus improve canonical path argument and I'm going to describe shortly this, this, this part here. Okay, so maybe I'll give just the, the main tools that can be derived from the, uh, from the Lyapunov function uh, uh, of Alexander. Okay, so, so 
quick question. Yeah. So for lambda equals one, is m equals two already interesting, or that's? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, so there is a first result that says that the probability that at any time larger than, n, say, constant n squared, the probability that you see an edge that is longer than a L, this has an exponential tail, okay? And then, uh, so the second lemma uh, actually holds also in presence of arbitrary constraint edges, and that is important because uh, when, we will want, when we will study the log Sobolev constant for this system, a typically boundary condition enters and one has to take sort of the worst possible situation, and therefore we need uh, tools that uh, hold also in presence of, cons of, of fixed edges that we call constrained edges, okay? Okay, so this may be, we, we can really skip this, but it, uh, because it will be used later on. So a key point instead that is uh, more easy to, to grasp is the following. So suppose that you have your rectangle and you cut off, a, say, a central part of the rectangle that you call R, and suppose that you have constrained edges, okay? Now suppose that uh, you have, say, two boundary conditions for the triangulation here, namely constrained edges that are different uh, that are tau or constrained edges that are completely in a different situation, tau prime, but you assume that both tau and tau prime are not intersecting the re this, this R region that you're looking at. Then the result says the following that, uh, so, so you, you, you will have two, uh, two uh, you know, Gibbs measure corresponding to these fixed edges or other fixed edges, other version of the fixed edges, mu tau prime. And then uh, uh, for lambda less than one, with uh, uh, a probability that exponentially close to one uh, in, this, in this length here, uh, you find for, you, you, you can couple these two measuring, this, this two measuring in such a way that they have a common vertical crossing of unit uh, vertical edges, okay? That is actually is a key tool because imagine that, for example, the, uh, that the uh, constraint edges are only on one side, say on the right hand side, and you want to prove that the two measure on the left hand side, they look the same, okay? Then one way to say is that, okay, at some point they will have a, you know, a common vertical uh, uh, crossing, okay? And then after that, you can just make an exact coupling. Okay, so, so this, is, uh, this is the essence of, of this result, okay? So this will, uh, so, so this, this lemma will allow us to, to, to implement this uh, rough idea. Okay, so back to, 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 to the finger triangles. Okay, so, so the first step is a burning phase, okay, that lasts n squared, actually takes most of the time, okay? So, you start from any configuration, then using the, the, this, this tool from the Lyapunov function, you enter a good set and you stay there for a large amount of time, say n to the 10, okay? Now, given the this, the, this structural property of the triangulation, uh, the, the original uh, unconditional measure and the measure and the Gibbs measure condition to stay in this good set, they, ask, they, are, they have very, very, very small variation distance. So it is actually enough to prove that the restricted chain uh, mixes inside this set in a time that, say, is little o of n square. So it's much smaller compared to the, to the burning time, okay? Okay, so step two, of course, at some point we have to prove some special mixing, call it strong special mixing maybe. Okay, so the situation is the following. You should, you should only concentrate, so forget about this V0, V1, V2, V3. Just look at V4 and uh, we have this uh, left and right rectangle. So imagine that you have uh, your, your rectangle here, okay, and, uh, and you fix, say, a, a configuration of edges here. 
you fix maybe another edge configuration in this in this in in this in in the same rectangle here that is not drawn okay and you want to sh and, and and you want to to compare the two marginals of the corresponding measure on the left rectangle okay well because of the of this result on the uh, high probability of having a vertical closing actually what you what you can prove is that the two marginal given this boundary con this this edge configuration here or here the two marginal on on the left they are very very close actually they are very close in a very strong sense they mean the relative density is very close to one actually is exponentially in this distance close to one okay so that's a key input to attack then the this uh, uh, log logarithmic sub of constant okay. yeah for example yeah mm -hmm. morally log okay but yeah just to be safe we will some polylog okay so how to prove the uh, logarithmic sub of constant for the for um, uh, for the restricted chain okay so the at high level uh, we 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 use this uh, halving procedure uh, that uh, has been used also for spin system uh, many many different setting okay so you so in a sense you want to go from scale n to scale n over 2 then n over 4 etc up to a scale that is like polylog and there you stop and try to do maybe something else Okay, that's the that's the pattern of the proof. So, um, so the the standard uh, way, the standard method is the following: you take your say initial scale n, you divide this in approximately two rectangles of lengths n over two, and but they have a little overlap, say polylog, okay, or say log, even even large constant log. Okay, so so lambda one is to the left, lambda two is to the right. Uh, now, the spatial mixing property implies that if you compute the entropy, the entropy of any function, non-negative function, the entropy approximately factorizes, and this is a is an old result by Chesi. Uh, and actually, so so factorized like that. That uh, so is. Uh, so it's like the average of the entropy here plus the average of the entropy in this other rectangle okay and there is a very small uh, uh, correction factor okay so once you have a quasi factorization of the entropy if you look for example at the entropy of lambda one this is on a on a scale that is roughly n over two okay so that immediately suggests that there is a multi-scale analysis okay Okay, so very quickly, so this is the Dirichlet form, this is the transition matrix for the chain, that's the entropy, and the logarithmic sub constant is this supremum, and the standard result that the mixing time, uh, so I put a tilde just to say that this is for the restricted chain in the good set, is, so is the logarithmic sub constant time a correction that is log. So if, if you prove that this logarithmic sub constant is n to a power less than 2, then uh, certainly you're done. Uh, which is, so actually the, our result is this one, and therefore uh, the mixing time in the good set is, uh, occurs on a scale that is uh, much shorter than a square, okay? Okay, so once you almost factorize the, ener the, the entropy, then immediately uh, you get that the logarithmic sub of constant on scale, okay, say original scale, say twice n, is, oh, sorry, there is, the, the two here is, is wrong, so this, the logarithmic sub of scale on the initial scale n is the sub of constant on scale half, then there is this, uh, this correction of the factorization of the entropy. Then there is this nasty 2. Now this nasty factor of 2 uh, comes from the fact that there is an overlap and all the flip of the edges in the overlap are counted both in the left rectangle and in the right rectangles are counted. So there is an overcounting problem. Okay? 
So this, of course, is not acceptable, this, uh, this overcounting, because if you, if you iterate a logarithmic number of times, two to, two, two to this logarithmic becomes a power, okay? But you do, a, okay, this is a trick of a, like a random averaging of where to choose the overlap of the rectangle, and then uh, this random averaging, sorry, um, reduces this two to another factor that is uh, well, well behaving. Now, I just warn you the following that, so here I'm using really a sloppy notation because whenever I consider, say, the entropy in this rectangle here, I'm imagining that the, all the edges here are fixed, so they behave like boundary conditions. So I should write boundary condition on top of all this uh, constant, uh, which would result in a complete uh, mess for the notation, so, but, uh, so is, this is important. Anyway, if you, if you use this multi-scale analysis, you go down uh, up to, to a polylog scale, and then you stop, okay? So now we have to do something else, okay? So a first bound would be to prove uh, a bound that is uh, typically in for spin system is like a trivial bound, is an exponential bound, okay? So actually this is not difficult, but it's not sufficient because the exponential of a polylog is is too bad for us. Um, there is another obstacle is that once we start conditioning on in scale, when we get down on scale, on the final scale polylog, there are many constrained edges sticking in that comes from the highest scale through all the scale, through all the intermediate scale. Okay, and this, and this, and these edges, they are of length at most log n, but they could be actually log n. Now, log n on scale polylog is like a small power, okay? So on this scale, on, on, the, on the final scale, we actually have to imagine that we have boundary edges that are coming, and they are on length that is a small power of the scale we are considering. Therefore, a straightforward bootstrapping, which, so a naive bootstrapping, which would be you know, we did this, uh, this, this uh, multi-scale analysis, we go from n to polylog, then we prove an exponential, trivial bound exponential in a polylog, now we go back, okay, and we say, oh, actually, now we know that for a scale is only exponential of a polylog of that scale, go back here, okay, and then you get exponential of actually a polylog of a polylog, and then, you're, and then you would be done. Okay, however, that is not possible because uh, in all this constant we should put a little label n because all the maximal length of the edges is log n is not reducing once you go down on scale, okay? So, so this, is, a, this is, an is an obstacle, okay? So really we need something else, so we need some, an, another tool, okay? So we need, a, for example, a poly so a polynomial bound on the log sub LF on this scale by some different means. Okay. So a first, at, a first attempt would be to, to say, okay, the log sub LF is bounded by polynomial times their inverse relaxation, by the relaxation time, inverse spectral gap. So the relaxation time you estimate with the congestion rate using uh, a canonical path. However, unfortunately, typically the canonical path they give you an exponential com uh, congestion rate, and so we are back to start. Okay, here is an improved uh, canonical uh, argument. So um, this actually, I mean, the, the, this improved canonical path that I'm using actually was used, I guess, for the first time with uh, Eyal, uh, Alan, uh, Pietro, and uh, Fabio Toninelli some dynamics for random surfaces, a completely different context. But I suspect that uh, should be somewhere also in the literature, so, but okay. Anyway, so suppose that you have the general settings, so you have a reversible Markov chain, and suppose that you have a subset of the state space such that for any pair of the of state in this subset, it's like the good subset, uh, it's possible to define a canonical path which is entirely in the, in the, in the subset chi prime, uh, and call the, conge the congestion rate for, for this path C chi prime. 
fix the time t and suppose that rho is a, is a lower bound for the probability starting from any starting point, that at time t you are in the good set. Then the relaxation time of the full chain is, uh, is bounded by this, this expression, so roughly t square over rho, and then the congestion in the good set divided by rho square. Okay, so there is a trade-off now uh, in, in choosing t, rho, etc. Okay? So t is the burning time to get to the set? Yeah, and sort of. Once you, hit, once you hit there, you gotta stay there too, or no? Well, no, 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 yeah, yeah, this is, and rho is uh, the minimum probability to be at that time in the good set, okay? Actually, it's, 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 it's not really difficult to prove this, this, this result. So back now, so now we would like to apply this improved canonical path uh, argument to, to thin rectangles. Okay, so the, so the result is the following. So consider the original, let me say the result for the original triangulation. So, the re, so consider the original triangulation uh, and suppose that uh, boundary, there are boundary edges that could stick in, okay, and they are even very long, but say no more than say n over four, okay? Then the relaxation time is actually polynomial in n, not maybe the right power, not one, or two, but say a polynomial, and then we will, and then the corollary of this theorem, of course, once you apply this theorem to the, uh, to the scale polylog, you're, you're done, okay? So once the relaxation time on polylogs uh, is polynomial of the polylog, so it's a polylog, then uh, also the log sub is a polylog and, uh, and, and the proof is finished. Okay, so this is a sketch. Uh, of course, so we want to apply this, uh, this improved canonical. So we want to find a, a good set of uh, where it's possible to define canonical paths with the only polynomial congestion rate and not exponential, okay? So omega prime is as follows. So remember that we may have, you know, edges sticking in which forces the minimal length of certain edges to be even very long, like fraction of n even, okay? And so the good set is like that, that any edge does not exceed by more than log the minimal, its ground state, so the, its minimal allowed length, okay? And a similar, uh, and then there is a similar property, so if any edge crosses the ground state at another point, then the length of this edge is essentially dictated by the ground state at the point X with the with the buffer of log n. Okay? The first one is multiplicative or additive? The first condition. Sorry. We go log n additive. Additive. Ah, so it does not exceed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so the lemma is the following now that if you take t, so t is this time to enter the, the good set, okay, so uh, which is, okay, constant m uh, n square, then omega prime satisfied the hypothesis of the, of the canonical path with the burning lemma, okay, with uh, rho, so the minimal probability this is bigger or equal than one half, again this was one of the tools that uh, I describe coming from this Lyapunov function, okay? And actually it is possible to construct path inside this set with a polynomial congestion rate, okay? So that's maybe, so the last, uh, the last bit, just, so the construction of the path is, I mean, is, is not really c completely straightforward, so, so certainly this is not the place to do that, but maybe just the sort of the basic principle is the following. So given two, ed, two, ed, two, conf, two triangulation, we have to construct a path going from sigma to eta. Now in principle, so if you want to say transform the edge at x, say x is my watch, okay, in sigma to the corresponding edges, edge in eta, maybe you have, you are, I mean, in order to do that, uh, you have to adjust many, many other edges with maybe midpoint that is very, very far away from X in principle, okay? That's one of the main feature of this triangulation problem, 
Okay? Now, the fact that we are in this set omega prime means that this, how far you have to correct stuff in order to be able to bring the edge sigma x to the edge of eta x is not essentially more than order log n. Okay? So then this suggests that if you take the original rectangle and you, di you divide it into slabs of length order log n, then you can sort of process, construct a path going from sigma to eta, starting from the left, so adjusting all the, all the edges uh, here, and in doing that, maybe you have to correct the edges also in the second slab, but no more. Then you go to the second slab, maybe you have to correct also a little bit of the third slab, and you proceed like that, okay? Exactly as you would do for a, say, one-dimensional spin model, okay? Left to right, okay? And then, of course, you have to check that the congestion rate that you get is only, is only polynomial, okay? So that's end of the proof. Thank you. Correctly. So, uh, how do you get this strokes partial mixing? Sorry? How do you get this strokes partial mixing? This strokes partial mixing uh, using. Uh, oh. So the special mixing. So maybe the, the 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 main result is this one. So I'll show you. Again, is is this? Okay. So imagine that you have a rectangle. Maybe I can just draw on the board. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the rough sketch is the following. So you have a rectangle and you examine a central part here, okay? Okay, so suppose that you put a boundary condition or, or you condition on what you see here, okay? But none of these edges, they, they touch this guy, okay? And suppose that you consider another version of the same problem, okay? And here there are some different edges, different edges, okay? What you can prove is the following, using the technique of Alex, is that uh, this, so there is a coupling of these two distribution such that with high probability in this intermediate, in this central rectangle, they share a vertical, a vertical crossing of, of edges. Once they share a common vertical crossing, then you can couple to the left with, with the identity coupling. Right? That's the, yeah. Typically in, say, I don't know, say spin system, a property like that is enforced but using like piers. So very, so you need some extreme value of the parameter. Okay, so, so it's remarkable that here, thanks to this Lyapunov function, it's possible to get that up to excluded, of course, uh, lambda one. Yeah, that's the best.